Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and today we're joined by the wonderful Nina Bloomgarden to talk all about her character Violet within the series The Resort. And you've you've talked a little bit about how when you first read the scripts, one of the things that really drew you in was this idea that this story could go in so many different possible directions. And I feel like in the episodes that that it really does go in in a multitude of directions. Um, how much conscientiousness did you or awareness did you want to have about the tone, the voice, the kind of myriad of genres that the show was bringing to the foreground? Because I was interested if that was something that was helpful and important to your performance in finding this character, or if it was just about focusing solely on who Violet is within the story that you're telling? I think it's the latter. I think I, I definitely tried to uh, understand Violet first. And I, I mean, I think I think that's important in general um, because if, if you start getting into tone and stuff, you get really all in your head and everything gets all jumbled and confusing. But when you kind of have a strong foundation of who the character is, uh, then what's going on around her and like around in the script kind of uh, just is kind of along for that journey. And it just kind of works that way. If that makes sense. Yeah. It does. And, you know, obviously you're working with Andy Sierra who did, who did Palm Springs as well, but this is, this is a story that's been gestating with him, I think even before Palm Springs. So for quite mm -hmm. a long time. Um, so even if you didn't have all of the scripts at the beginning, was he able to give you certain key points or, or details about the arc and where your character was going in a way that was helpful as well? Yeah. I mean, we had so many conversations um, and he sent uh, me and Skylar an outline of everything that uh, kind of unfolds between us and, and kind of where the story was headed. There was still plenty of changes, I think, as we were shooting that were different. Like originally, um, my dad, Murray, in it, he's meant to have a girlfriend who's like 10 years older than me. And that was quickly axed, um, or not quickly axed, that was axed like after we'd already started shooting. So I was like, oh shoot, like I had already created an entire backstory for that. And, but it, it actually ended up being a lot um, neater, I think when that character went away and they just, you know, left room just to focus on our relationship without having to add this extra body in between and, and um, yeah. But yeah, like, yeah, the script would change all the time, but Andy was great with allowing us to have conversations uh, before a couple days before we would shoot a scene, we kind of go over it and, um, have like, like a, a collaborative session kind of, so he would change the script if Skyler and I were like, oh, that doesn't really feel too much like our characters. Um, and yeah, he was really great at not being so set in stone with certain things. I also wanted to ask about the audition process as well and, and just kind of how much detail you had in terms of character or in terms of story to go off of in starting to build out that initial conception and that first impression of who you felt she was when you first stepped into auditioning. Yeah, I mean, I didn't have much. I mean, I think the first, uh, it was it was a pretty like wild audition experience because I would, I, I, I worked with somebody for the first audition and it was only like the scene at the resort uh, where I'm kind of talking to Sam at the bar. Um, and so I sent that in and I did, you know, as much as I could do and then didn't hear anything. And then a couple of weeks later, it was like, hey, they want you to retake. They added an extra scene. So no one ever explicitly said there was a callback. They would just say, we want you to retake. And that happens a lot. And those are not you know, there's not that pressure for it to be like a callback. You just think, oh, they don't really know what they want. They just added another scene because they want to keep like searching for like, you know, they need they need more information from everybody across across everywhere. So then we tacked on another scene with uh, my dad and the girlfriend. And then I realized, okay, she's grieving. There's like, so then like slowly getting more information about who this character is like, okay, she's lost her mom. I don't know how recently she's lost her mom. Um, and so then I do that. And then again, they're like, okay, they want you to retake. They added another scene and you're like, okay, I'll just retake, I guess. Again, there's no pressure for there to be like a callback or anything. And then I taped for, uh, Hannah, so Debbie Ryan's character, I taped for that. 
in between. So again, I was like, okay, they really don't know what they want. They're just like, they're doing this for everybody. Um, and then again, I got another violet scene and it was like retaping scenes that I had already done. But again, no mention of a callback. And then it went into like a interview process where I didn't have to do any scenes. So it was just me, Andy, uh, Ben Sinclair, and Allison Miller. Uh, and I was like, oh, I guess I'm in the running for this. That was like the first moment where I was like, okay, okay, this is this has never happened before. <laughs> this has never been like, a, I've never had like a an audition process go this way. And then I was like suddenly testing and then there I was. <laughs> Yeah. And you were, talk- you were talking there about one of the character aspects being that she's lost her mother and she's still kind of going through this grieving process. And, and obviously through the show, you know, we do learn that it's, it's only been a year since she lost her. And there's, you know, more details that come about that relationship, about, you know, some of the regret- regrets that she has from towards the end of their time together. Um, and I was interested in how you took the details that were in the script and really fleshed out so much of what you imagined that relationship to have looked like, because it is so central to your character and so many things that she's going through within the series and and even just the connection that she finds with Sam. Yeah, I mean, it was really, it it, it came at a really odd time in my life, the audition and my my own father passed away. Actually, I'm realizing I auditioned in September when my dad was still with us and just sick. And then, um, the next set of auditions I got for it, he had passed. And it was such like a a, a weird time for me um, and to be given like Violet at that time because it's a weird time for her too. We We were going through the same things, but like separately, I think, I think we grieved very, uh, differently where I was very much there when my dad was passing and I I was I kind of had to drop everything and and go to New York for three months and be home with my mom and I think Violet um did the opposite she couldn't she couldn't watch her her uh parent kind of deteriorate and, and kind of become the child and so I like gained a lot of empathy um through kind of like working with her and and getting to uh you know yeah unfold (laughs) my relationship to Violet and as and, and my relationship to grief yeah and, and in the dynamic that starts building between Violet and, and Sam, played by Skylar Gazondo, um, you know, did the two of you talk about some of that undercurrent of, of what each character is going through, some of the pain that they're experiencing and, and how that would build some of the connectivity? Because they're not telling each other these things out loud when they first meet, but there's something that they seem to just sense in one another. Yeah, I mean, I think I think also they're they're at this resort where everyone's happy and, you know, they're you know, he discovers that his girlfriend's cheating and I'm, and I'm there for not for vacation. I'm there for a very different idea. And I think that's how they kind of come together. But yeah, we, we definitely had a bunch of conversations. We actually met, we, there wasn't a lot of um, time to get to know each other before shooting. Um, Skylar wasn't confirmed yet until I think like two days before he showed up. Uh, or two days before our start date. So it wasn't like there was much time to reach out and like get to know each other, which I think worked out really well because Sam and Violet are meeting each other for the first time. And then me and Skylar are meeting each other for the first time. And the first scene we shot was the scene where we are doing like the the head gluing thing. And um, it's super awkward and uncomfortable. And it was our first day on set and we're all getting to know each other like we're trying to figure out our dynamics with the crew and the crew with us and uh, with Ben Sinclair. We're like, what, you know, like what's his style? Is it going to like, are we going to clash? Are we not going to clash? Like what is going to happen? And then me and Skylar, it's like, are we going to be able to figure this out? There's just like a lot of question marks. And I think it worked perfectly because it's such an awkward scene to have like a stranger bleeding out on your couch. And um, yeah, I think we really 
got to play into that. And I think as the series unfolded, as we, we just both kind of grew our relationship together and our banter together and were able to, uh, I think it works really well on screen. Yeah. One of the things I love about that particular scene though, is that we see that she's not necessarily, she's not grossed out by the blood and she's completely happy to, you know, super glue his head back together. But at the same time, she's not exactly calm under duress, you know, kind of running into the room, throwing things around to find what she needs and admitting that she thinks it looks terrible and is really gross out loud. She's not filtering herself or or kind of calming her voice. What, what led to those specific choices of how you envision the way she would be in that situation? I mean, I think going back to, grief and all of that I think it's it's such a it's such a messy thing where suddenly you're numb and you don't know like what's going on in your life and everything feels really dull and then suddenly this light comes in or this energy comes in and she's like feeling something for the first time it's like this this like excitement this wave of like uh, emotion again and spontaneity and I think I think that really encapsulates like grief very well because you'll be really numb at one point and then suddenly you're like trying to feel something you're trying you like you're just latching onto anything that's going to like give you a spark and I think Sam ends up being the perfect distraction for her. And you mentioned there the the spontaneity, which is part of her as well. And, um, you know, that kind of like leads her down certain paths st- narratively as well. How did you want to, to kind of find what's the spontaneity to her and how did that inform certain choices that you were making for her as a character, knowing that that was a core part of her decision-making process? Yeah. I mean, I, I just, it's, it's interesting because I feel very, I can feel very far removed from that side of her I'm like a huge overthinker so I really had to kind of like let go of that and jump in and I was I was working with a coach and he was like all right you have to do something spontaneous uh every day for a week and my anxiety was like flaring up every day I was like I gotta feel this out I gotta and it's like the joy that it brings you to just do something and, and not think and just something that, that you, like, it takes you on a journey to, like, a different place in the world. Like, I, I like, snuck into, like, I, I, like, crashed a wedding and, like, got, like, a huge plate of food. And, like, after I was, like, I felt like a little kid. I was so giddy. I was so, like, alive. And I was, like, why don't I do this every day? Why don't I, like, take a bus and, like, not know where it's going to take me and just, like, figure out how to get home, like, without a phone or something. It's just, um, and, and I really tried to, like, have that bleed into, you know, Violet's decision-making because she really gets herself into some crazy situations. And Sam's kind of like the voice of reason. And she's just really like, like an adrenaline junkie. And, and I, and I think that's, that's a new thing to her as well. I think she's not expecting that, but the book that she has, which um, I had to really equate to just the book is her mom like that is her her mom's essence everything like the book is everything and when you have a goal that that is that important like I don't think she was expecting to have all these twists and turns out but I thought I think she thought it would be really like self-explanatory she's just gonna wake up the next day and go to her destination but um she's not gonna stop no matter what gets in her way and a lot of things get in her way and she's like well I'm just gonna have to go through and you can come with me Sam if you want uh but this is I'm doing this and yeah you can either come or go I love what you were saying about you know really thinking meticulously about a lot of the details but then you know finding where you need to have a bit more spontaneity in terms of of acting in general with with every role that you take on what are the moments where you find yourself just like really wanting to dig in really wanting to ask a lot of questions and be very specific about details and what are some of the spaces where you feel like there is that necessity to kind of like pull back from the details a little bit at times as well yeah I mean I think I think that's what the rehearsal process is for I think or the preparation process I come from theater. So I think like when you're in the rehearsal room, you're very, you're going all in, you're doing backstory, you're doing facts, givens, uh, like objectives, everything. And then, um, and then when it's performance time, that's really when the fuck it comes in and you have to just 
trust yourself. And that's where the spontaneity can come in. And it can come in in the rehearsal process too, of course. But I think that's where the headiness is at the beginning. And then you start to play and then you start to like build. And um, it's been a really weird um, transition for me because I'm so used to having that room with all the actors and the director and whoever else kind of playing and playing games and kind of moving into this world of doing it on your own and preparing on your own. And um, you don't know what actors you're going to really work with, you know, like you might like a rehearsal process, but your person you're playing opposite might not like a rehearsal process. And you kind of just have to go with that and kind of have to like figure out your preparation before and figure out like, all that and cross your fingers that you've done enough. And that's, that's been a big, big challenge for me. And I, I constantly have to remind myself that this is like a new medium. It's like, it's all under acting, but it's, it's a new world for me. And, um, and I just have to trust that like, it's a process and it's going to feel really scary at times because it is so new which is, which is so odd because I I've been in like acting classes since I was 12 so suddenly like stepping into like a familiar place but an extremely extremely foreign place at the same time has been like so wild and confusing but that's why it's, it's like it's important for me to take classes or work with a coach because um I that's where I get my my collaboration and rehearsal process out and like I can talk to someone and they're there with me like a hundred percent um and then and then it's like time to go out on my own and meet the actor and but, but I but I think like that's that's also the beauty of it and this, that's where the spontaneity kind of lives it's when you get on set and you're just like playing now and that's it and that's yeah that's where the meat is- lies yeah it is, and, and it also does sound like in working on this show that there was that that very open collaborative environment, and and especially because you have so many one on one scenes with Skylar and get to really kind of build that connectivity between the two. Um, and I've heard you kind of talk a little bit about how you know before you were going into filming a scene, you'd have that discussion about it. If one of you had an idea, maybe you'd be thinking about how do I play off of of that. That Andy yeah. would be part of those conversations too. And so, how did that really help the evolution of of kind of certain character choices? or certain moments in scenes for you even just knowing that you had that space to go in and try different things if you wanted to I think as we went on it just got better and better and again I think that worked out perfectly because Skylar or or Sam and Violet were getting more comfortable with each other and so of course your humor is going to kind of develop so I think at the beginning it was like oh do you think I can like do this do you think I can say this line? And then by the end, it was like, okay, okay. So what you're going to do is I'm going to hold the flashlight under my face and I'm going to look crazy. And then it's like, just, then we start playing and then our directors are like, Nina, stop holding the flashlight under your face. It's really unflattering and stuff like that. And you're like, okay, shit, sorry. Like we went too far. Um, But um, yeah, or just, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It it, it was, I think, yeah, as, as the process went on and I just felt more comfortable being like, Andy, I don't know if this is, this is, she would say this and he's like, change it, go, whatever, whatever you want, do it. And I was like, okay. (laughs) And um, I think, yeah, we, we slowly eased into that side of things. We're also like getting to talk to like Kristen and Will and kind of hear what they were doing and what their time on set was really kind of opened me up to um, not being so afraid of, of, looking silly um yeah and opening that door of like oh I can I can do whatever I I want and even working with Ben Sinclair like and and I think that was also the blessing of working so many like theater actors that there was room to play and there was room to rehearse and sometimes the takes felt like a rehearsal room when we were working with Ben like we would do exercises but we'd be filming and he used it, it was genius like his, his he's he's got an incredible mind 
And on the opposite side from building out a new relationship for Violet, you have the dynamic that she has with her dad played by Nick Offerman in the series. And that's something where also just they're going through this the same trauma and the same loss, but they're at very different spaces and and dealing with it in very different ways from one another. So there's things that they communicate and things that are kind of silent communication between the two of them. And so how did you figure out that that landscape and that space working with Nick? Yeah, I mean, it's funny you said that because we did a lot of silent takes where we would not speak at all and we would do the whole scene without saying a word. Um, And uh, yeah, I mean grief is it's so uncomfortable especially in your 20s um and oddly it's 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 the most uncomfortable when you're around someone that you love the most because like what can you say really it's like you know that you're both in these deep feelings but it's so it's so fascinating how hard it is to open up to someone that you are closest to. And I don't know, I don't know what it is. I'm a very open person and I find it really hard to like have conversations with my mom about like, uh, about a lot of things. And I I think it's, I I don't know. I think it it just means so so much to them. They're like, like Rita or, or his wife, my mom like meant so much to these two characters in in different ways obviously that it's yeah it's too it's too heavy to comprehend um but also you're in your 20s and this is the time where you're stepping away from your parents you're like leaving college you're entering this adult world and your parents might want you to be at home with them um it's like it's this awkward thing where you're both letting go you're both they're letting go of their their baby and you're letting go of like that that safety net and that's super awkward too so when you add like this horrible um loss on top of that it's it's just super layered and and complicated and you know there's a scene where uh where where I leave Nick, I leave Murray at, uh, at dinner to go off. And, and I was playing it originally. Like, it was really hard for me to like, be like, Oh dad, can I, can I like, can I go? Is that okay? Like, are you, are you okay? Like that guilt, that guilt that you feel, but it, it wasn't working because she just needs to go. She just got to go and she's going to go follow her own thing. And however her dad is feeling, she can't think about it at that moment. And I think it makes it that much like more heartbreaking for, yeah. And with with the myriad of different places that this character has taken you throughout the entire season, what would you say ended up being the most challenging aspects of either kind of finding her as a character or, or capturing her as a character in your performance? Truly how similar she was to me. Um, I think I had to remind myself that uh, that whatever she is dealing with is so similar to what I'm dealing with and that I don't need to push it and I don't need to um, find something or, or dig extremely deep because it was already there. And I think by the end, I was just reflecting and thinking about it um, the other day. I think by the end of my time, was when I was starting to reflect more about my dad's life and I was moving into a different stage of grief where it was less numb and it was more like emotional and it was more chaotic and it was more, I I could, I could grasp it more. And I, and at first I was like, I wish I had that when, um, when we had started, but then I was like, but she's, she's in the same, in those same stages too. And yeah, she is completely numb in the beginning. She uh, like, and that's what, that's what keeps her going. And then by the end, you know, that's where the more it, it becomes, it becomes real. The, the loss becomes real, I think at the end and, and at the beginning it's, it's not, um, it hasn't sunk in yet. 
for her. But all these details, especially, you know, with how many different places this story is going narratively throughout the season are, are so fascinating to hear. So thank you so much for talking all about it. Really appreciate it, Nina. Yeah.